What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Byron Vasquez Jr. I'm a Los Angeles-based actor, and here you will find personal stories of my journey as an actor, as well as tips and tricks and other acting-related content. In this video, I will be giving you an acting tip on how to connect with the character using the information from the script if you're not able to do so emotionally. So, without further ado, let's roll the camera and action! Let's say you're working on a character and you're stuck. You're not connecting to the material because maybe you haven't experienced those particular set of circumstances or for whatever reason you're just not resonating with it emotionally. So what do you do? We as actors should think of ourselves as character surgeons. If we can't find our way into the character using our emotions, are we out of luck? No. We will use a path of information. Konstantin Stanislavski said, Thus, our first objective now is to seek the creative stimuli, the playwright embedded in his work to excite the actor. So what does this mean? Let's try a little exercise. I took a small scene from the TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'm going to do it one time trying to resonate with the character using my emotions. Then, we're going to talk about the story a little bit and mine the script for information, and then we will do it once again and see what happens. Now here is something important. During the rehearsal process, Every time you talk about your character, you will always refer to them as me or I. You don't want to be talking about your character and create a wall of separation. You want to talk about your character as if it's you, as if you are the character. So all the emotional and psychological gifts that you find in the script will land in your psyche. Alright? Here we go. Ford, these people don't deserve to die. Well, neither do I. But apparently no one took that into consideration because I'm still dying. I look good, don't I? Well, let me tell you something. I've got six months left, and by then, what they bury won't even look like me. I'll be bald and shriveled, and I'll smell bad. No, I'm not going out like that. I'm sorry, Summers. Did I screw up your righteous anger riff? Does the nest of tumors liquefy in my brain kind of spoil the fun? I'm sorry. I had no idea. But what you're doing is still very wrong. Okay, well, you try vomiting for 24 hours straight because the pain in your head is so intense, and then we'll discuss the concept of right and wrong. These people, they're sheep. They want to be vampires because they're lonely, miserable, or bored. I don't have a choice. Okay, so that was a run-through. That was a run-through of a script, and maybe I wasn't connecting to it. And maybe I felt like, oh, I'm not really bringing out the emotions of the character, so what's happening? Well, let's mine the script for the information. What's happening in this script? Buffy's friend from elementary school has now showed up. So I am Buffy's friend showing up and seeing my old friend again. But I have tumors in my head. And how do I feel about that? Well, let's see. The doctor told me that I have six months to live. I got the information that my old friend Buffy was a vampire slayer, which means that she has connections or she knows a vampire that could turn me, essentially that could cure me of my disease. I go to Sunnydale, I infiltrate her group of friends, and I strike an alliance between Spike and myself that I will deliver Buffy so he can kill her as long as he turns me into a vampire. I also make friends with a group of people that want to be turned into vampires. However, they want to be vampires because they think it's cool or or it's a fad, but nobody knows that I actually want to live. I want to be cured of this disease. I want to be cured of my tumors. At this point, I'm so desperate. I'm so desperate to live that I'm willing to sacrifice my best friend Buffy and all these people here. Buffy says, for these people don't deserve to die. Neither do I, but apparently no one took that into consideration because I'm still dying. What does that mean? I'm saying I don't deserve to die either. Nobody cares about my pain. I'm young too. I'm 16 years old too, and I'm dying. You can save them, but no one can save me. And the only people that can save me is these vampires. It says that Buffy begins to realize what he's up to now. What am I saying? I'm saying, I look good, don't I? You can't tell on my face yet, right? You can't see that it's eating me up inside, the cancer or the tumors in my brains. But let me tell you something. I'm not as healthy as I look. I've got maybe six months left, which means I don't have a lot of time left, and this is my only option. Ford says, I'm sorry, Summers. Did I screw up your righteous anger riff? So now, Buffy, at first, she was saying that what you're doing is wrong, but I don't see it that way. And so you're just experiencing what I'm experiencing, which is tumors and cancer and the reality of death, the reality that I'm going to die. Until you experience, until you're in those positions, then you can tell me what I'm doing is wrong or right. These people are sheep. What am I saying about these people? They're followers. 
They want to become vampires. They want to die. I don't want to die. I want to live. They want to be vampires because they're lonely or miserable or bored. But I don't have a choice. So how do I feel? I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel scared because I don't want to die. I'm using whatever tools I have left. Hail Mary. I'm using a Hail Mary in order to survive, in order to live, because I'm 16 years old. I don't want to die. I still have a lot of life to live, and it's not fair because of tumors that I have no control over. And if I can get somebody to turn me, if I can get somebody to give me everlasting life, then I'm going to do it because I don't want to die. I'm starting to feel a sense of understanding what the character is going through. But let's take another step further. We now need to understand what the script is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do improvisation. Me and the reader are going to do it again, uh, but instead of using the lines, I'm going to improvise the entire scene with her without even trying to think of the lines. Ford, these people don't deserve to die. No, they don't deserve to die, but neither do I. But nobody takes that into consideration, right? Because I'm still dying. All right, now that we ran it, improvise, so we're getting a better understanding. The lines are kind of starting to fill up in my body. I'm starting to understand what Ford is going through, what I'm going through. I don't want to die. I'm scared. I'm angry that my life is cut short. But I'm going to do whatever it takes in order to get the outcome that I want. And now we're going to run the scene again and see what happens. Ford, these people don't deserve to die. Well, neither do I, but no one took that into consideration because I'm still dying. I look good, don't I? Well, let me tell you something. I've got maybe six months to live, and by then, what they bury won't even look like me. I'll be bald, and I'll be shriveled, and I'll smell bad. <laughs> no, I'm not going out that way. I'm sorry, Summers. Did I mess up your righteous anger riff? Does a nest of tumors liquefying my brain kind of spoil the fun? I'm sorry, I had no idea. But what you're doing is still very wrong. Okay, well, you try vomiting for 24 hours straight because the pain in your head is so intense. And then you tell me. And then we'll discuss the concept of right and wrong. These people are sheep. They want to be vampires because they're bored, or miserable, or lonely. I don't have a choice. And there you go. That's just how you start playing with the character. That's how you start bringing out emotions. Know what's going on in the script. Improvise it. Run the scenes again. Do it over and over again until the colors start coming out. The emotions start to pop until the words start to have meaning. And then you're going to create a performance that you're going to really love. But thank you very much. My name is Byron Vasquez Jr. Make sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more of my personal stories as an actor, as well as tips and tricks and other acting-related content. But for now, that's a wrap.